this topic uh, for today's presentation, I think I will just make it more slightly skewed towards Southeast Asia. But I do have some case study in Australia that I think will be good for me to share with you. So uh, the topic is quite, I would say it's quite uh, unique in a way because I'm looking at the key performance opportunity for communication service for us. So the acronym is actually the CSP. So um, the key thing is, how can we actually help SMP to sell each other? So um, I, my agenda is very simple. I just have to do a very quick introduction, market overview, and then I'm going to touch a little bit about the regional SME context, case studies, uh, CSP positioning and strategy, as well as a quick summary. Oh, very, very okay. Because I think she's oh, recording, okay. right? Yeah. All right, okay. Um, oh, you want, uh, this? <laughs> okay, um, so, um, so when Kami, I'm not sure whether you know Kami, uh, Kami was here last year, December, but she was also here in December 2016. This is actually a slide, the introductions. So we talked something about um, this time to look at B to B market from the right way up. So if you look into the S and E, so this is basically uh, international labor organization OECD. So S and E itself actually contribute ninety nine percent of the businesses globally, and two thirds of jobs we are looking at the formal formal economy. So when I say formal economy, it actually means those taxpayers. Of course, there are some informal economy which is a bit hard to trace. Um, and we are talking about 50% of the SME in average. Um, they are, SME is actually contribution, contributing about 50% in average of the economy value of, of GDP. So globally, I would say the bulk of job creation is actually coming from a company less than 100 employment size. And communication service provider, however, only focus about 70% of their resources over 1% of large enterprise. And in fact, if you actually look into this 99%, this is actually the missing piece. And we do see there is a big money in a small business. But a lot of communication service provider or telco will deem that SME is actually a very tough market to penetrate. So what about Malaysia context? So this is actually a data that I took from um, SME Corp Malaysia last year. So Michael Soho contribute about 75 or 3 percent of the uh, enterprises in Malaysia. Small is roughly about 29, sorry, 20.9 percent, and medium is about 22 percent. And in total, SME actually contribute about 98.5 percent. Akan 900 sorry, 890,000 roughly of business establishment in SMT, uh, in Malaysia. So large enterprise is only about 1.5%. Okay, so similar to what I presented just now about the B2B demographic, uh, I would say Malaysia's uh, in terms of the B2B demographic is very similar to the global, which is roughly about 99%. However, if you actually look into this 50% in average economy value of GDP contribution, Malaysia is actually way behind. SME in Malaysia only contribute about 36.3% of the core of the country GDP. So our government ambitious is actually uh, we want to uh, make SME to deliver 41% of the GDP by year 2020. So compared to uh, 36.3%. Um, but I would say this is actually a massive undertaking. And um, if you actually look into the SME itself, it is rather hard to grow SME market because it's very hard to predict. And if you actually look into different buyer persona, they have a lot of different buyer persona, buy different buyer industry as well. And there is also a gray area when we talk about consumer SME, so called micro enterprises. This is actually a gray area. So we run a survey, we ask about the Asian SME. Sorry, when you say grow, uh, that's when you are uh, expecting the SME itself to 
grown to the level of the field. It's about uh, communication service provider. Oh. The intention to grow the SME market, trying to monetize the SME market. Oh, okay. It's a bit tough. So we run a survey, we ask about is the link of digital skills is coming your business. And so this is actually by industry, but if you actually look into the right hand side, four out of them state that digital illiteracy is actually harming their business. And nine out of them believe that ICT investment can actually make their business more competitive. So trust in technology is pretty strong among SMB, but the, the knowledge is pretty poor. So digital literacy is a concern as reliance on ICT growth. And we believe education to SMB will definitely help in growing the ICT knowledge. So with this slide, I would say it is crucial to help SMB to grow their digital skills. And one of the key things that Telco can look into this in helping them to transform their business digitally is via e-commerce or e-business. So let's just look at the other slide. Let's look at how many internet users in Southeast Asia today. So basically we have more than 500 million internet users in Southeast Asia today. So uh, we did a study, uh, it's a joint study uh, with some resources coming from over some estimation from Temase and Google. And this is what we see. The e-commerce in Southeast Asia will surpass US 80 billion by 2025. So the 80 billion here is actually, um, so there is actually a lot of methodology how we actually calculate this. So uh, we actually consider the price of goods we we'll consider as the e-commerce, the values of the e-commerce. So the, the price, the value that you purchase of goods is considered the e-commerce thing to value. What, what's the current I have a slide on that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right there. So, um, and there can't be a better time for SMB to tap into e-commerce now. So I think uh, digital free trade zone, well, this is something that so everyone's talking about. There's a hot topic in uh, last year, even in 2016. So, uh, Digital Free Trade Zone is actually a cloud-based initiative that we aims to transfer the SMB, uh, Malaysia SMB with minimal tariff, speedy and uh, centralized custom clearance, warehousing and fulfillment facility, so as well as log uh, logis logistic support. Yeah. So the hub is set, okay, there is actually a pre-launch live, uh, but the hub is going to set for launch. So here come the market overview. Why we think uh, helping the e-commerce, SME uh, grow in e-commerce is so important. So okay, we have a consumer research team, and this diagram is actually I, 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 I stole from my consumer team. So we talk about consumer. Um, when we talk about consumer, there is a lot, there's a lot of things that we think about consumer today. So we are consumer. So I'm, I'm very sure you can actually resonate strongly about the consumption behavior in terms of data, in terms of what you want, and this is something that Telco is also interested in. So when you think about what social networking or OTP player, like maybe like uh, subscription video on demand that you're watching, and you think about are they any uh, trapped, agitated, are they feeling trapped, agitated, or are they feeling tired when they are walking in the mall, is there a place for them to rest, or when they are actually looking, walking at the mall, which direction they are facing, um, the shopping mall, which one they will be actually looking at, so this is actually something that we talk about, a contextual commerce, so, and we believe that uh, moving forward, it's not really not moving forward, even it's already happening now, the, um, the rise of contextual commerce is actually moving away from a 2D dimension, now it's actually a 3D dimension, which is actually a 360 view. So um, back then we talked about e-commerce, it's always about B2B, B2C, but in order for service provider to order their solution to SMP, they have to think about something macroly, which is something more uh, 
holistically, which is B to B to C. So a new form of internet economy is disrupting the market, moving traditional e-commerce to a new generation of e-commerce. So I would say the e-commerce today probably is actually the third generation of e-commerce. So what is actually the first generation of e-commerce? Okay. Traditional e-commerce, this is basically a close to. So when we think about e-commerce, basically it involves information flow. So the information flow is the exchange of information. And then we have payment system. Payment system is the cash flow. And the third is the logistic system, product, service, delivery. So I would say this is the traditional e-commerce close to. And the second generation, I would say, is actually the mobile commerce which in this um, diagram I will make it as uh, is here but all of these will actually form a new generation of e-commerce we call it whether you want to call it x-commerce or everything to commerce yeah so the sharing economy is basically the collaboration consumption models like you see a b and b or even if you talk about red car Uber, it's basically a sharing economy but at the same time, there's also they can also consider as on-demand services. So whenever you need something, you can just make a call, they will just deliver to the house. For example, it's Dowkin.com, Service Hero. So if you need any service, you just have to make an appointment. The plumber will actually come to your house and fix um, whatever you should have face at home. Okay, um, so mobile commerce is something not really just about NFT, proximity payment but there is something about the peer-to-peer -peer payment as well. And social commerce is also something that we have seen in the market today. That people talk a lot in the WhatsApp, we have WhatsApp group, uh, we chat, we have online, and people discuss about issues on like Facebook before we actually make up the decision to buy something. So I would say social commerce will be something that will actually influence the entire ecosystem of e-commerce. And then um, online to offline. So it could be offline to online or vice versa. So it is a business strategy that draw potential customer from online channel to physical store. So for example, if you actually go, if you actually download an apps of popul popular bookstore, so that apps actually tell you, oh well, if you actually go to a popular store located in uh, one Utama, then we are going to give you like thirty percent of discount of this textbook, for example, then that will actually lead to a behavior from online to offline. It could be by the serve from offline into online. So maybe you are in a bookstore, you give you some voucher, some coupon. So once you just give in some uh, some uh, password, then you can actually get some free things like free drinks online. Then you can actually redeem the voucher. Okay, the next thing is about customer experience. So um, I would say this is something about omni-channel contact centers. Like for example, if I purchase something online um, in Lazada, I bought a sports shoes, and the color that I choose is actually black color. But when it actually delivered to me, it's actually white color. So what I can do, I can click the call, or click the video conferencing, and I can just show the agent, hey, this is not what I want. Can you just replace the color that I want? So it's about customer experience. And um, with the new whole system of e-commerce, the market is actually changing. So a new generation of e-commerce basically is all encompassing omni-channel customer journey. Uh, just remember these words, all encompassing omni-channel customer journey. I'm going to repeat this again and again. Uh, that combine new information exchange, exchange of information. Basically, it is a hybridization. Every of these variables is going to affecting each other. And um, industry collaboration platform. So customer experience is going to link with social commerce or mobile commerce and will affect the tradition of commerce. And also the last mile delivery system, which is on the logistic part, and to cater to the changing consumer purchasing behavior. So that's how we actually see how the e-commerce e market is actually evolving today. So this is the first and second generation. So okay, 
So I didn't really like show the second, but um, however, the second one that is really growing for all these like sharing economies is actually the mobile campus. So it's something that you are using the website, but you actually can create an apps that allows you to purchase something from other like GSP apps, something like that. Before the, all the sharing economy. So the next slide is about current market dynamic. So Southeast Asia is one of the fastest growing internet market in the world. So this slide is going to tell you about internet subscriptions uh, by country. So I have um, I have Australia and New Zealand, uh, and we actually come up with a figure of uh, 2016 to 2021. So with my question, uh, 2017, I got 2016. <laughs> but if you need 2070, I can cut. I, I do have an Excel sheet. So basically, this data is uh, taken from Google, uh, worldwide uh, cellular internet services, and worldwide uh, broadband internet services. So we do see Southeast Asia to grow is going to be about 3.2% in terms of cable between 2016 and 2021. And the fastest growth, I would say, is actually Thailand, Philippines, but if I actually get to Australia or Singapore, this is a bit and Vietnam as well. So the next slide is about growth of e-commerce in the region. So um, okay, again I have 2015 versus 2025. I took a 10 years cable so that you can see how fast this market is actually going. So e-commerce will continue to proliferate. Moving from a total market size of 16.7 billion in 2015 up to nearly 160 million in 2025, including Australia and New Zealand. But bear in mind, uh, this is the includes of the, uh, the value of goods. Yeah. Well, how, what, what do you mean that? Why must you specify it is, is including the value of goods? Because there is a lot of people talking about e commerce. Okay. Some people talk about the transaction of the e-commerce itself and they don't really consider the goods price. Mm -hmm. Like let's say if I, I purchase a refrigerator online, mm -hmm. so that refrigerator has a cost me about 2,800 ringgit, that one will be considered as an e-commerce as a whole. Because that is something that you purchase online. Okay. But some people may actually be like, mm, well maybe I should just calculate in terms of the e-commerce in terms of the last mile delivery the logistic price. So there's a, a lots of variables in mind that how people actually do the calculation of the performance. Okay. Um, what about ticketing? Air ticket. Is it part of it? Ticketing, yes. Ticketing is part of it. Because this is something that you purchase from the So when we talk about uh, e-commerce, so let's think we have three things. One is physical goods. And the other one, the other one is actually uh, subscription, something like uh, services, uh, or maybe services. So etiquette are considered as services. And then the third one is actually something like uh, something like iTunes, you purchase music online, or you go to Netflix, you watch movie, that are considered as a subscription. So in terms of business model of e-commerce, it's also different. So one is called inventory. So the inventory is actually the whole one. You can see uh, like eBay or the eBay at the Brazen. Back then they actually have a warehouse. Uh, but the warehouse is very costly. So what the, the e-commerce market is actually transforming today is called marketplace lead. So the marketplace lead is something like we don't really have a warehouse here. So it's very much depending on okay, it could be stored everywhere. So let's say if someone actually booked this, then I'll just say, oh yeah, um, I'll just pick the uh, someone who's actually selling this, let them know that actually there's a client who's buying it, so you have to ship it to them. So, um, I have a question about the <laughs> And the subscription base is actually those digital goods. Like what I told you, like the uh, video, music, IQ. Okay. So let's say uh, that's true if we only capture, let's now think of a soul what the Asia is for. So they say if we are only capturing those uh, value, mm -hmm. let's say if we have a, a way to capture the transit 
value uh, okay. if you're buying and if you're buying or if you're So it's actually not reflecting the whole e-commerce market. Right? We will only have to we are just actually even the biggest uh, host uh, owned by uh, Alibaba, let's say just Malaysia. Yep. So we say Lazada, uh, Shopee, Lao, uh, Buddha, all this. Uh, so they think it's not representing the whole e-commerce market uh, yet? No, actually yes. So what I meant here is... But because it's okay. good space, ma. so they think we it's, have to consider a Asia and uh, Mars and even let's say Emirates mm -hmm. on this side. Right? That's a bit tricky, right? Ah, so I think this is a question we are saying. Yeah. So, so no, 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 the yeah, temporary so in, in, in fact, when I work on these things, right? So that's why you see what source. I got Temasek, I got Google, I got government website, I got Star Star, I got BNZ market view over estimation. Mm. So it's a, it's a so, so big so, of a range. And even so even I checked with, you know Malaysia come out with the e-commerce for them. So when I look at that data, I also ask. So which e-commerce value that are you being capturing? Yeah, I, I have read that one that they only because they, that one came up by a consultant, so one specific consultant which the one the name I think you know, I think most of the people who study e-commerce also know. So they consultant actually do so they do not have a basis where they true, come true. up with the So um okay, we are all this right, I came from IBC. <laughs> when I was in IBC, I I did something quite similar and I also struggled about should I really consider about the goods value or should I just consider about the transaction value? But uh, because everyone is talking about goods value, and this is actually the business. So, I, so when I say a government website, actually that's 2014 Malaysia's uh, e-commerce from that. That one is actually a feature, okay, a feature. Unfortunately, I have to say that. Because this is actually a forecast. But the forecast itself, um, of course, I can't really just easily come up with a forecast. To come up with some forecast assumption. So I do have a spreadsheet on the forecast assumption. Maybe I can share with you why I share with this uh, market forecast. Mm -hmm. Because if you see any other news or whatever, whenever they they want to talk about forecast of e-commerce in Malaysia, how much the growth and this and that, they always refer to the roadmap bigger, you know, the bigger that, that which yeah, is because that is actually the national source. And when we talk about national source, of course, this is actually this is actually So if you can see here, I have this BNZ and Market View. This is actually from Australia New Zealand. So um, I would say Indonesia will be the fastest, but it's come come with a valid reason because in terms of population, it's very very huge um, and. The tremendous growth is basically driven by large middle class population in Southeast Asia. Uh, increase of smartphone. So in Indonesia, the uh, smartphone penetration is actually not very high. So we see the smartphone the penetration is actually less than 25%. So um, since we actually uh, include up to the year 2025, we believe uh, the penetration of the smartphone going to search up the e-commerce uh, market as well. Uh, then we also think about uh, active uh, social media user. We also think about the young trading population. So the population in Southeast Asia is actually uh, leading by Generation Y. Yes, yes. Generation Y or even So this is the regional SME context. So this is based on survey. So we, we survey about 1,046 SME in the region, including Australia and New Zealand. We asked the question about what are the biggest challenges in running the business at present. So marketing, finding new customers, 54%. Managing cost of profitability is about 48%. So more than half of SMB is sustainable negotiation to find and keep customers. But the problem is so if you are not transforming internally or transforming digitally, it will be very hard for you to get a great few customers, especially with customers. And even though managing cash so that's why you can see managing cash flow is important, but in a lot of these SMB only they will say, 
So if I really cannot find customers, then my second choice would be can I just manage my cash flow? So Asian SMB are highly motivated to improve the customer outreach and experience. So e-commerce has opened up a new, more efficient way to help SMB finding new customers. Um, I'm pretty sure that I'm not the only research house saying that. In fact, uh, when I browse online, I can see a lot of some research researchers is actually saying is that SMB are increasing the e commerce But readiness, the question is the readiness, is it there? And we also see many developing countries are still not taking full advantage of this opportunity. So the next question we ask, how do you use a website? For those who actually have a website, how do you use it? So 82% say that it's for contact details, promotion, frequent ask questions, customer feedback. But if you actually look down, right, take payment for product services, so I would say 8 out of 10 small business have a website, but they do read about it. The website is just to tell people, we exist. This is our contact details, where you can find us, our location. That's all. But close to two thirds of SME cannot take payment online. So it's roughly uh, uh, more than 60% cannot take online. So, um, so website, I would say website usage still remain rudimentary um, for most of small business as compared to the large enterprise in the market who actually fully use uh, e-commerce transactions for their business. And um, there's a reason of it. Um, the constitution is basically to see SMB and nature of itself. We don't really have a lot of resources. And to come with e-commerce is also something quite positive. You don't know how to manage. But in fact, this also explains why Telco, or not just Telco, any service provider will actually have an opportunity on that. Okay. Um, so we asked, would you consider this service from your main communication providers? And in fact, we'd be surprised that uh, majority will say yes. Even though I would say they would consider, but this is still a slightly positive feedback as compared to not interested. So online digital marketing, as well as setting up an online store, is still rather positive. I wouldn't say it's a bit more appealing, but I would say it's positive feedback. And this will actually connect to the next question I have. It's all about trust. Why you can see there is still about thirty-seven percent saying that not interested, forty-two percent said not interested. So this is the case. So we do see trust is fragmented, but advisory skills are very high. So we ask the question: Who do you trust for business and technology, technology advice? The skill is IT consultant, system integrator, then local tech reseller or value added reseller, then operator is actually ranked. But you'll be surprised, you can see accountant. It's actually pretty similar to operator. So probably you'll be surprised as to why accountant. So if any of you attend Kirby briefing of uh, December, so um, she actually mentioned about this, um, she was actually a newcomer that is actually threatening the telephone numbers. One of the key ones is actually the accountant. So we can see there's a lot of this uh, cloud accounting firm. firm. So one of it is actually this uh, synergy, synergy in Malaysia. So they claim themselves as club, um, club accountant. So their key business is actually helping people to do uh, and work up in payments and things like that, bookkeeping. But in fact, they also quietly tap into the IT markets. They are helping small markets um, to set up uh, their e-commerce website, and even offering like point of sales channels. And you'll be surprised. Most of the people they are talking to is actually line of business. Because the customer will be basically those uh, finance directors, CFO. So in a way, they are actually talking to the CFO in terms of setting up a uh, So yeah, they are talking to the right person who can give money. Uh. True. And once the CFO, the line of business is being convinced, then the CEO can say, you say, yeah, I'm okay, I'm convinced. And you got the money, you got the budget, just go. 
Um, there's another one in Indonesia, it's pretty strong. The name is called Buku Buku, B U K U. Yeah, it's also a cloud accounting firm. So, SME one guided support from communication service provider that understand their business and which they are trying to improve. Telcos will demonstrate consultancy skills are more likely to gather trust in the education is Strong consultancy and advisory service will help in the telco in the economic side. Okay, so uh, I'm not going to go through every of it because it's a bit easy. Um, this is actually my report last year. So I, I'm showing some examples how Telco in Southeast Asia. Um, there's one case for um, Telstra that is actually offering e-commerce uh, for SMT. So Singtel launched 99% of SMT. So this is basically a five years uh, marketing campaign and they actually partner with adults and people. So one of it is actually a uh, regulator, IDA. I think now it's called IDA. Yeah. So um, they partner with bank. Uh, to come up with some uh, resources plan. So when I say resources package or resources plan, is that they can, you know, uh, selling the Google in each other. So oh, I actually got this customer, and they actually keep the work to help. So that's why if you got a chance, you go to the Singtel website, there's lots of like banking information. How can you actually get them to run and things like that? And the one that is really bad is actually the Singapore guy. So the track means of track, the international track as well. Um, so um, the CSP also collaborated with Nanyang, which is actually the institution, the Polytechnic, and Singapore Polytechnic as well as SMP, to be here to leverage, to use tools and resources. So you'll be surprised if you actually go to Singapore Food Court, you can see this robot. The robot is actually so some of the ideas is actually coming from students from this uh, polytechnic. So eShop Builder is basically the uh, software as a service, um, web builder and mobile responsive website, turn website into an e-commerce site, set payment models and billing address, watch the eShop to go. So um, there's actually some analytics um, dashboard inside. So from week to week, you can actually monitor who is actually browsing your know, website. Okay, so I know it's a bit contradictory in China, but they actually come up with the idea of Shopping in uh, last year, July. So Shopping is a new e-commerce solution uh, which is going beyond creation of the website and at the same time they also have to grow and build their customer base with a single platform. So let's say if you already have a Shopify website, there is a way of configuration you can just put your entire Shopify things that you actually uh, publish in, in some e-commerce website. You can actually throw it into the Shopify. And the other one is Aptic. Aptic is actually uh, an online advertising platform. I'm not sure whether you've heard about Amobi. Amobi is actually a marketing technology and technology firm um, which was required, acquired by Singtel. So they basically use uh, one of the subsidiary so I think it's actually a product come up as Intel itself, but they actually work together with MOB to assess how uh, oh sorry, how SME can actually you know advertise in Facebook or advertise in Google. So pretty familiar, this is the Telecom Malaysia Vets. Um, so it's on their cloud exchange digital marketplace. The e-commerce solutions come under SME value and the services. We call it this app store, an industry solution, uh, and shop in a box. So basically they have three types of different things, but for me it's all about e-commerce. So this app store is all about software as a service. So these are actually some solutions that they can actually offer. So in many cases, people, SME would think software as a service is something that they can afford because it's pay as you go, uh, pay money, uh, it's a low hanging fruit for SME. Um, but there's also a question, so when we evaluate the cloud marketplace, 
we don't really see a lot of these apps playing as really, really doing very well. Uh, that's the fact. So I can actually wrote a report about cloud marketplace. Uh, when we comparing apps that's offered in Telco, uh, cloud marketplace, 2016 versus 2016, you can see a lot of these apps drop off. There's only one thing that can surprise the cloud marketplace, it's actually Microsoft 365. So um, shop in the box, um, they have office in the box, which is actually doing pretty well, and then they come with a shop in the box. So it's basically come with the bundles with the uh, connection. So the good thing about Telecom Malaysia is that there's actually a very good idea is that they do soft bundling. Uh, soft bundling as in you can actually come up with your own packages. They allow the consumer to choose the packages they want. Like internet, I want 30 pack, at the end of the day, then maybe I want to pair with and post or post. Um, then maybe I want another item, maybe with text phone. So there's something good about them. Ha, huh, okay. This is actually the interesting one. Um, it's telephone cell. I kind of obsessed with telephone cell. Um, because I think Indonesia is actually a very, very good market. And anything outside of Java, um, there is a lot of untapped markets. Bank is not around those like Kampong. It's big part of the access to the market. But aside then, they are coming with an e-commerce website, Telcom Cell, Mobile Post. Actually, I'm more interested in the right hand side. So what they do is they come up with a mobile payment it's called um, Wallet Share. Um, called Tap to Pay. So it's actually using the NFC stickers. And they can use pay on mobile, which is online, so share money, peer to peer share money. And what's good about this, you see, digital transformation is in, it's not an effort of a company that can be a, a, a broader uh, ecosystem. So the good thing is about is actually help itself collaborate with bank to transform those mom and pop shop, those small incumbent. And they make those mom and pop shops the dynamic become their agent. And okay, there's a video, it's a very interesting video that I'm sharing with you. So so the outcome is that it can reach out to more than one uh, million customer and 170,000 Latin Bandai agent. And the Latin Bandai agent is basically the SMP by the end of 2016. Let me see if I can show you this video. That's what's going on.
<laughs> so they were authorized, and what happened well uh, is uh, the bank will actually send an SMS to this feature, mm -hmm. the activation code. Even withdrawal associate, they have the password to exactly. authorize. Okay. Yeah. So if the merchant don't have enough cash, cash. so that person needs to go to another shop. Huh? Yes. Oh. <laughs> so they become, so they watch it, they get out of it, they become agent. <laughs> agent of the bank. At the same time, they are also agent of the bank themselves. Ah, yeah. So before doing any transaction, so you need to confirm with Machi. You better start to say more. And you know, the Machi, the Machi, actually know people well. I book up the Ronchi, it is more than I could do. So when you come, hey, hey, book up the town. Interest rate, rubber, rubber. <laughs> so localization is very So this one is uh, Blue Philippines. Um, no, nothing not surprised about Blue Philippines. It's more or less, more or less the same <coughs> like company in Asia. So they actually have <coughs> software as a service. Uh, but one thing I want to mention is that they actually partner with a global e-commerce player, Shopify. But in terms of this uh, XN, the shipping is actually with a local startup. Oh, as compared to Singtel, Singtel is more sexier because in terms of the shop tip, the uh, last mile delivery is with all those FedEx, UPS, even Singpost. Okay, Todd, um, they also come up with this Todd Just Pay in 2015. So it's basically something like uh, this mobile wallet. Okay, I, I found Telstra is very interesting. So although uh, what they actually offer is pretty much the same uh, with what you've seen just now. Uh, so Telstra actually acquired a company called Nito. Nito is actually a e-commerce provider that's very strong in security. So, so what I did was I actually registered a fake account, a fake email, just to see, want to see how good they are. Uh, Nothing about this, but I'm actually, I, I found it really fascinating with this one, Nito Online Store. They actually provide a free consultancy services for my business. So even though I, I keep cool, I say I'm actually a, you know, I'm a Malaysian, but I have moved to Australia, and, uh, but I want to cut Satukedai, Jua Baju. So what is actually the solution? Can you actually give me any feedback? And well, it's very good. They actually provide me a WebEx live streaming and actually tell me what to do in terms of opening, run a distance from my business in Australia. So um, this is something cool because what I can see is all those websites, they actually provide curation in terms of team. So you can know, okay, you want to <coughs> open an e-commerce space, this is what you should do. Um, the Telcom cell one is unique because they have channel partners. They actually have very strong channel partner, which is basically the budget, 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 budget. And for this case of Telstra, is they provide consultation services. So if you actually remember one of the, uh, the slide that I showed, one of the obstacles faced by uh, SME is that they need advisory services. They need, there's a lot of things they want to do that they don't know how to do. And this thing actually helped them, and it's actually free of charge. Okay, so okay, my next slide is about a 
summary of how I observe all these service providers. Of course, actually, I did about 10 to 12 uh, service providers, but just to uh, cut short time, actually, I just present about six in Southeast Asia. So, in summary, what I see is that a lot of these service providers actually have a partnership and investment uh, with all these uh, service providers. So, this is actually uh, I took from Club Telecoms, Club Monitors. Um, so, I think officials can access to this. So, once you actually access to that uh, worksheet, you can see all the activities, the partners, that telco is actually and um, mm, okay, to unlock the the e-commerce economy in the region, uh, so many communication service providers they actually have wealth uh, in e-commerce uh, to counterbalance the decline in traditional telco revenue. So this partnership is crucial because. And, the, and those uh, vendors also wanted to work together with Telco because of localization. Because all these uh, domestic players actually know the local market. And the next thing I want to talk about is how about HTTP have the They have, um, they partner with those uh, startup. These are all the startups. But it's not something very fancy. So the one that I show is those, you see, um, SoftBank and Transform. Uh, TechDis. TechDis is actually something, it's, it's quite, uh, I wouldn't say it's very famous, but it's at least it's sizable in Singapore. Um, and if you look, they partner with Shopify, and then Singtel, eShop Reader, to come up with 99% like SMP. Singtel also partner with us. Something more sizable. <laughs> Actually, we have more things inside that, so I encourage you to uh, go through it. So, uh, the next one that I, my conclusion is also saying is that actually all CSP study in the region have gained strong reputation in the local market. So, when I say local market, it's actually their whole country as a So, in a way, like we talk about South Korea, talk about Texas, talk about the middle of Asia, the middle of Malaysia is a very strong database. So it's there already. So if you can actually work out something that provides some value and services to this SME, it can be very helpful. So understand local customer journey is one of the key things. Localization strategy is a key advantage for many CSP um, as compared to global e-commerce players like Alibaba. I don't think Alibaba knows about this market. They have to go to a partnership. Um, eBay, Shopify, especially the bundle connectivity, like Telecom Malaysia, just now I mentioned about these soft bundles um, and other adjacent opportunities. Also, collaboration with local initiatives, including the uh, governments, the banks, and startup, um, is also something very important. Um, the third one is about so, driving innovation through the local how you drive innovation via the localizing process. Uh, remember the video I showed you just now? So it's a localization. You do see that those remote areas have the need to go to bank. And they have to travel very far to go to small and uh, uh, in order to do some transaction. So they innovate it and come up with an idea using that and the And I actually spoke to them myself, so it's very interesting that they did some study and so they, they asked about, we want to do this and do that. And all the kampong people said, ah, interesting. I don't know how computer the panda. And so, but what they did was, they actually adopt a push strategy instead of a pull strategy. So they create something, push it out, and they educate it. So the telephone cell video is not just simply they just simple come out. So after they come out, they actually form a lot of focus group discussion. They, they send people to train all these budget, 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 budget. And at the same time, they also provide lots of information to educate the villagers. So um, one of the key things that I know is that even though that market is not mature, 
but it's actually worth for you to come up something, push that thing to the market, and trigger the curiosity, then people will actually embrace it. Rather than wait and say the market is not ready. Um, something, okay, there's another thing that I want to mention here. Do you realize all my case studies are really have Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so when I work on this study, study Vietnam. And I said, wow, the web traffic is actually very high. And I mean, Vietnam is actually very really bad. But how come all the telco is not really operating in commerce? Then I realized something. I spoke to Vitel, uh, the vice president of Vitel, and I asked her a question about hey, why you are not really operating an e-commerce solution um, SMB in Vietnam. And then they said, it's all about behavior and culture. So Vietnamese still purchase buy things with cash. So what they can do is they can actually go online and book things but they are not going to pay anything. Mm -hmm. And the credit card penetration is also relatively low in Vietnam. So I book the stuff, I believe by me, then people come and deliver. I say no eating sugar. But who is the one who's going to bear the logistic cost? It's all the service provider. So eventually, all the telco back up saying, I'm not going to come up with the cost. So again, localization, that's the key. Think about behavior and culture, purchasing behavior of that particular country, the consumer. And Asia is very tough. See, Southeast Asia, Northeast Asia, Northeast Asia, it's very different. So a lot of things <coughs> like regional, so those like global telco, we think that Malaysia is very some is actually it's not it's tough. And to be frank, to be very frank, right, I found that some people actually use Malaysia as a real case of those. Because we got Malay, Chinese, and Indian. It's actually not easy on their success. So if you can success in Malaysia, I'm pretty sure you can success in China. So another thing is about 3C approach. Um, the 3C approach is what I mentioned just now is the curation. So you will see all the telco itself they actually come up with curation of e-commerce solution, or maybe retail solution, is repaid. So in what is done is just appropriate product selection and bundling and calling to proven customer needs. Consulting, the Telstra actually provides consulting. And then the China is the telco side is providing the channel. So to be very frank, right, I haven't really seen the research at Telco. It's really looking at the three C. That actually they have everything: curation, consulting, and channel. Even Telstra, they have consulting, but the channel may not be strong. Telcom, Telstra, oh sorry, uh, Telcom Cell actually have channel, but consulting they don't really uh, So this is actually the channel mix. You have to think about so what is actually the decision to be made on the channel mix. So for example, direct. Is also very costly. Like those large enterprises, they will they will have an account manager. But if you are selling to these people, which is the SME, mostly it's actually sell service. But if you actually do sell service, then people will not feel the intimacy. So this is actually something that you have to balance out. I won't talk about this, this is actually a framework. Uh, eventually, this is about how each other need to be to see e-commerce. We talk about integration area, artificial intelligence, IoT, backend service, digital market services. Everything have to come together to come up with uh, all integrated solution, e-commerce solution. Okay, key takeaway. This is my last slide. So, local market nuances and specific requirement should be the dominating factor for the success of e-commerce. So, she has uh, telco should collaborate with local initiative, either they are a startup, or maybe a local bank, or maybe a local government, to support locally and to drive innovation through localization process. Um, local CSP have greater advantages to offer e-commerce as compared to those global uh, providers. Okay? Uh, most of the international e-commerce providers offer very generic solution. They don't know much about what local people want. Keep thought of mind that the ultimate goal should be digital integration solution. This is actually the digital integration solution. 
everything have to be connected. Uh, in a way, it's a hybridization, hybrid solution. Uh, be an advisor when you update the e-commerce and the organization. Uh, build trust and credibility by position as an advisor. It's more essential that upsell and cross-sell. I have a strong e-commerce partner. That's actually my CSP push strategy can be more effective than waiting for the demand pool, notably in developing substation. You don't wait for the markets to mature. Yeah, that's all for my presentation. Any questions? Yes. Yeah. Uh, can, you, can you go back to the same term with the other test? Like, uh, this one? Yeah. So, for example, here you have uh, CSP working with Lazada, which is not strictly in uh, SME, right? But they oh. give access to the. Okay, no. So, so what they actually offer is that Singtel, they actually work together with. SME to offer all these solutions. They, they come up with the, uh, the website and they come up with some design, even helping them to uh, analyze the thing. But eventually, they will actually package it and throw it to Lazada. So now we take the same thing to Lazada in Malaysia. So in Malaysia, they don't work with the CSP, they yes. work directly with CME, for example. Uh, so they they, they rather than work with uh, Telco, okay. they work with some banking sector. Okay. Is that indicative of a future trend where rather than go to a Telco as a pretty go um, to some a different way? There is something about digital free trade, so I think Telecom is also one of the partners. Mm -hmm. right. So Lazada is actually a company of Alibaba. So eventually it's all done. That's what I think. And I don't see, even if you're actually partnering with uh, a bank, this actually I don't see this will be punished as well. You have to understand the key strengths of Telco is actually the uh, legacy connecting to the car. So these are all some kind of services just to show people that you can actually run the transform. And uh, looking at the legal potential, SME developers. Looking at Telco Malaysia, they they must enter the digital company now. Yeah. Yes. But that is yes. Is it wishful thinking? Yes. Yes. You know, I was at this like my PDC, uh, it's kind of between the data center. They mm -hmm. actually position, oh we are a disaster recovery hub. They are trying to like uh, you know, attract those uh, enterprises in Singapore to try to invest. But looking at it, I was <laughs> I don't recommend that. It's just you can talk about disaster recovery hub, you have to fulfill a global standard. So you're making an analogy between the two. Yeah. Okay. So I I was there and no, I mean the, the physical setup I think is, is good. Mm. But I question about sustainability. Um, if you talk about disaster recovery, um, even though you can position that we actually very cheap, um, but why people are still investing in Singapore? But okay, of, of course there's an attraction. Some people, some company from Singapore Maybe those local conglomerates were actually looking into Malaysia. Or maybe some global company will actually uh, use IBDC, but there will be those non critical data to actually post in Malaysia. But the basket of services, so they'll, they'll put some there, but for the more critical ones, they'll put them there. There's a private club of clubs. It's uh, a lot of those conversations, <coughs> and it costs.
do not really interested in to e-commerce kind of you know, program like uh, that was in Singapore. That was in uh, okay, I would say the SME 1997 is actually a government initiative. So even though it's actually back is as it's not just um, the Singtel, although Singtel is the one that actually uh, the one that is in the public sector in the university. So IMDA is the one that actually is uh, international enterprise in the world.